it happened when i said i think you got very angry when they when you saw your father had been shot she came alive in that for her it was like it had happened yesterday the her here is demati de sabar in 1930 in a village called saliha in nuwapada district of western orissa 16 year old demati took on officers from the world's most powerful empire the british raj but have you heard of demati has her name come up in celebrated speeches of our freedom struggle have you read of her in textbooks probably not that's because demati is among the thousands of common and rural indians who led some of the most brave revolts against the british but whose fight went largely unacknowledged and almost totally forgotten in public memory in this very special episode of pari podcast our founder editor p sainath tells us how he spent the last 20 years to search for to find meet and document ordinary people who fought against an oppressive regime all for the sake of a better society he calls them the foot soldiers of freedom and today sainath recounts one of his most memorable interviews ever an interview with a woman called demati te sabar one of the greatest experiences for me ever as a journalist as an indian and as a human being was meeting demati de sabar dei is a shortened a local usage for devi demati devi sabar an adivasi of the sabar tribe in odisha from the village of saliha originally from the village of saliha in noapada in what is now noapada district of western odisha there were extraordinary people like you know like salihan an adivasi in uh, odisha in western od i was meeting her some seven decades after she led an astonishing attack on a british platoon in her village which had come and shot her father he was lying on the street with bleeding there was an underground independence circle movement in that village and that i mean that village was a hotbed for such activity for freedom for the freedom struggle and the british sent soldiers and policemen to discipline the village which they did by raising homes and burning and looting all the grain and food of the village so that they would starvation would be a punishment for them apart from the fact that they shot a few people one of those shot was her father who was lying on the street the young girl salihan was then 16 they were all in the fields working in the in the in the field in their own fields the fields at those times were surrounded by jungle or in the midst of them and as she told me well you know everybody had to have a big strong lathi you know sometimes t- taller than themselves and a stout lathi because you ran into wild animals very often in the fields so these 40 young adivasi women were working in the fields when a young boy came running out and told her that your father has been shot he is lying in the village main street so Sa- Sa- salihan when i met her her memory was fading she was going blind there were many things she couldn't remember sometimes she couldn't remember the names of some of her children let alone grandchildren it was it was quite an uh, a tricky thing for my colleague and fellow pari worker purushottam takur and myself when we were trying to revive her memories it happened when i said i think you got very angry when they when you saw your father had been shot she came alive in that for her it was like it had happened yesterday from that moment she spoke as much as she could before she tired she said of the le- lieutenant or whoever it was over there 
she said i chase that scoundrel down the street and she was laughing and i rained blows on him he was too surprised to do anything else he just ran she beat and chased the man around the village and the 40 other girls attacked the british soldiers and police and drove them out of the village okay they without her father her father was later arrested but they kept she kept him back in the village she was able to chase away these people it and it sort of the news of this spread like wildfire and other villages got into the protest and uh, it's uh, other villages got into the protest and it came to be known as the saliha uprising and typically of a male dominated paternalistic society decades later when salihan she was called salihan when i met her because she was in her husband's village and she was someone who had come from the village of saliha so the short end for her was salihan decades later the government of odisha gave her a certificate in which the achievement is credited to her father and she is being honored because her father was a freedom fighter she was the freedom fighter who took on british armed with guns and she took them on with a lathi and you give her this patronizing damn certificate saying the daughter of the great freedom fighter i'm sure her father was a great freedom fighter but the saliha uprising was her initiative spontaneous she said i just lost it when i saw him lying on the ground bleeding from the thigh i would have fought them there's no question that i would have fought them under any circumstances the year was 1930 i think actually it was 1930 and she was all of 16 years old so imagine 40 young women racing back from the jungle and the fields and taking on police and soldiers and tr- yeah and chasing them out of their village demathi's charge against the british and their police was a um, you know it became a legend of its time and is of course post independence completely forgotten though you have official records of that rising you do and her incredible courage unrewarded outside her village is largely forgotten or oh, there are i noticed in that area and when i met her it was the year of the gujarat riots and the violence and everything else and a big temple was coming up there nearby and nothing to celebrate or commemorate the in incredible courage of this woman salihan because of whom the other women also took their lathis and attacked the british the women of saliha of the saliha village lit a candle that day that could never be extinguished in western odisha she had she had that multi colored official certificate authentic her heroism it's a holy possession that spoke more of her father did not record the counter attack she led she had no pension no assistance from either the center or the state of odisha she kept forgetting as i said her memory was fading but whenever her father came into it she came alive and we were both purushottam and i were completely we were shaken by our interaction with this totally selfless person you know who sought nothing for her heroism i could not after a while i could not after a while even take notes you know because she was rambling she was losing it but we were both deeply not just impressed but somehow hurt to see her in that poverty in that neglect in that village it took me a very long time to actually write a piece about her what i did write what i did write on the way back in the car in my head 
I wrote a rather, well, I don't know, I wrote a poem. When we left, when we left, she was waving and smiling at us. And both of us were on the verge of tears. That was the impact she had on us. And I just couldn't think anymore at that moment in terms of a story. I think in the next half an hour in the car or the next 15 minutes in the car, as we drove away, the poem or this apology for a poem wrote itself for Demati Sabar Salihan. They won't tell your story, Salihan, and I can't see you making page three. That's for the painted whatnot, the liposuction blot. The rest is for the captains of industry. Prime time is not for you, Salihan. It is, and this isn't funny. For those who murder and maim, who burn and who blame, and speak saintly then of harmony. The Brits torched your village, Salihan. So many men carrying guns. They came by the train bringing terror and pain till sanity itself was undone. They burned all there was, Salihan, after looting the cash and the grain. Brutes of the Raj, they laid a violent charge, but you faced them with total disdain. You strode down the street towards him. You faced that man with a gun. In Saliha, they still tell the story of the battle you fought and you won. Your kin lay bleeding around you, your father a bullet in his leg. Still you stood tall, drove those Brits to the wall, for you went there to fight, not to beg. You struck that officer, Salihan, and thrashed him before he could move. When he finally did, he limped and he hid, seeking refuge from 16-year-old you. Forty girls against the Raj Salihan, and strong and beautiful too. Now you're shrunk and you're grey, your body withers away, but there's a spark in those eyes that's still you. Those who toadied the Raj Salihan, they rule your poor village today, and build temples of stone, but they'll never atone for bartering our freedoms away. You die as you lived, Salihan, hungry with little to eat. In history's shades, your memory, it fades, like Raipur jail's roster sheet. Had I but your heart, Salihan, what success would I then not see? Though that battle itself was not for yourself, but that others might also be free. Our children should know you, Salihan, but what is your claim to fame? No ramp did you glide, no crown wear with pride, nor lent Pepsi and Coke your name. Do speak to me, Salihan, for endless an hour as you please. This hack, when we part, wants to write of your heart, not romance India's captains of sleaze. Salihan is no more. She has been dead a decade and a half. But my meeting with her is in my mind like it happened yesterday.